Miami, Florida. It's known for its beauty, its beaches, its culture, but you know the real magic begins when you hit the water. Ow! If you know me, you know I'm ready to dive in. So today I'm meeting up with my buddy Roy. We're gonna do some free diving for lobsters. He's been doing this for a long time and he knows exactly what he's doing. Hopefully he can coach me along so I can find a couple of these amazing creatures deep down under. How's Roy, hey, hey, how's Ryan. it going my man? So what exactly are we getting into today? Free diving, we're gonna be sticking our hands in some holes, digging around for some lobster and hopefully pull out a lobster. All right, so before we get started, we gotta do a little bit of safety stuff. I'm gonna teach you a little bit about breath holding okay. and basically what's gonna be going on with your body so that you can extend your breath hold, dive deeper, and hang out longer on the bottom to get more lobster. Cool, cool. Easy. As long as Easy I can peasy. stand up in the water, I'm good, man. Five foot, we got it, let's go. <laughs> So Roy wants to give me a little taste of what we're actually going after, the lobsters themselves. I don't know what's up, but I guess he feels like I need a little bit of motivation. We're doing some ceviche today. Right, I'm on yeah, board, I'm hungry. All right, so I need you to juice those limes. Just put the juice in there. And this was actually gonna cook the fish. Okay. So next we got some of this bell pepper, red onions, nice. And then we're actually gonna let this stuff sit with the rest of that juice, so okay. you got some work to do. Oh man. All those I limes, get, hard get at it. How in the world do you even get started lobster diving? Like, what is, what's your first experience? Oh man, you know, I, I moved down here to Miami in 2003 and uh, some older guys that I met, um, they're semi-retired. I met them in a parking lot and made friends with them. And really? within a couple weeks, they invited me out on their boat and they said, Roy, do you know how to lobster? And I said, no. And they just brought me out on their boat and taught me everything that I know. And it, since then, I was hooked. You almost got to wonder who figured this out. Who figured out right. the lime would cook fish? Exactly. I think uh, the Peruvians are pretty good at the ceviche. Ah. All right, let's see what we got here. Drum roll. That's streaming with flavor. It's like a really, really good salsa. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? Like the coconut? It's a lot of flavor for real. All right, now that I had a taste, I'm ready to jump in. Tell me a little bit about your comfort level in the water. I've caught bass as deep as 70 foot before, so I'm plenty comfortable catching fish. You okay, that's no big deal. That's that's good. We're gonna we're gonna be holding our breath today, though. How comfortable are you holding your breath? I mean, like when you say holy, what what are you talking about? What? Gonna what do I need breath. to hold my breath for? A minute. We gotta dive down. We gotta look for the lobster, dig in the holes, and pull them out. So we just need to hold our breath long enough to do okay. that. You think I you can do think that? I can watch you do that. So you are gonna be doing it today. So one of the things hold that. On. I mean, I gotta take my glass. I gotta look at you good before I do this. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so, all right, I'm listening, I'm listening. Okay, so the name of the game in free diving is relaxation. Okay. Your ability to relax is, is gonna help you hold your breath longer and longer and longer. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna put my glasses back on for this. I don't want you to see any fear in my eyes, so <laughs> here okay. we go. So we're gonna breathe in okay. for two seconds. I want you to watch me first. Then I'm gonna hold it for two seconds. And I'm gonna exhale for eight seconds. I think this is like yoga. Hold it for two seconds. Inhale. Hold it. Exhale. I gotta tell you, I'm pretty excited to take what I've learned from Roy and apply those techniques, those breathing techniques, to my everyday life. Being able to be calm, things gonna help me out in the real world, and especially in the bass fishing world. Over time, your heart rate is actually gonna lower, okay. and you're gonna become more relaxed, okay? I'm gonna keep this in mind the next time we're tournament fishing. I'm gonna, <laughs> if you see me on the tournament boat, like doing a bunch of hissing, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not mad at anybody. I'm just trying to get my heart rate down. Exactly. That's all, that's all I gotta do to get my heart rate down. Basic tools for lobstering. Got a tickle stick. Feel All it. Right. It's nice and light, aluminum. You get plastic, aluminum, whatever. Tickling with this end. Exactly. Once you get them out, you need something to pick them up with. So you can use this net. I don't need that. I'm just going to use my hand. You can do that. I'll let you use that. I'm a pro. That's just hold on. I got this. All right. <laughs> the other thing you have to have in Florida is when you're hunting for lobster, you got to have a measuring gauge. Okay. Uh... So. You have to have the carapace fit right in here, which is about, I think, three inches. If it fits in here, it's too small. Ah. So this cannot fit. Ah, it can't fit. Okay, so ah. you always gotta have that on you. We're looking for the big boys. 
Ooh, that's cool. Ow! I'm getting in. Okay, I'm in. What's the depth here? 13 feet. <laughs> Woo! I, oh, I dropped it. I dropped it. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's gone. He's a goner. There was one I had my hands on one. I let him slip out. Dude, the breathing thing is so much easier on land. You get down there, you're like. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't keep my breath ten seconds underwater now. If I can barely do that, there's no way I'm gonna be able to get down 15 foot and try to grab one. It was more like a Lamaze course than it was free diving for me. Here you go, Brian. There you go. There's dinner. Oh, beautiful. Number one. Look at this tail. You see all the colors in there? All I need is some yum yum sauce to go with that. Yeah, so you're gonna measure him. Like that can't fit in this slot. Yeah. So you can see he's way under. Yeah. All right, let him live, let him grow. I gotta be honest, this was totally tougher than I thought it would be. Between low visibility and rough waters, it's real challenging to find these lobsters in the cracks of the rocks. But you know me, I'm always up for a challenge and I was able to get a few, even though I was struggling a little bit. That took a lot of work. I think all, I was down there, Roy had one under his armpit, one in his hand, they had three in his goggles. <laughs> that took a lot of work. All I want to do is eat some ceviche, baby. You gotta be honest with you. All of this work that we did for these lobsters has made me pretty hungry. I've worked up an appetite. So now we're gonna head back to my buddy Roy's house. We're gonna put in some more work. This time it's gonna be in the kitchen. We're just gonna go right down. I go right down the middle. And then we're gonna just keep holding it. it tastes better simple. It's just garlic, okay. fresh grated garlic with olive oil and some salt. Okay. So just season it up here, just put it in there. Spread them right down the middle. Yeah, and I'll salt it right after you. The simpler the better because we wanna enjoy the sweet Florida lobster. Okay. All right, we're almost there. We're just gonna finish up these tortillas and then take the lobster off, pull out the meat, chop it up, and be ready to go. One thing that I've learned about life is that mentorship is invaluable. So I wanted to know a little bit more about Roy's mentors. There are a lot of cool things in Miami, you know, and most of it is when you leave land and you go right. in the water, you know, right. and that's where you just start discovering a lot of things. I mean, the guy that got me into the sport, Don Kemp, he's in his mid 80s, you know, and he's not really in the sport anymore because he's, you know, he's, he's yeah. He's older. Right. Um, he comes from a Miami family, you know, third generation lobsterman. He knows those spots. He could go and triangulate from the lighthouse, from Soldier Key, yeah. and just figure out this is the spot and look down, and sure enough, there's the reef. Right. I mean, it's those types of skills that were passed down that you just can't, right. you can't get that stuff anymore. Yeah. You know, you gotta have the experience, and that's from putting in the time. The old school guys, they don't have the fancy electronics, they have none of that. It's yeah. amazing how the old school guys are so good at that. Yeah, and you know, he, Don would only go out on an incoming tide, ah. because the incoming tide brings in the clean water, a lot of things that you know that right. our older folks can That's cool, share man. with us. And That's we're cool. lucky that you know we're, we're yes, we're, luckily having yeah. to take you under a wing like that. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, that's how free diving is. You know, you, you discover it, you find something that you like, and you just become obsessed with it, and you just do it over and over and over again until right. you just like you know it's a lifestyle. I feel like I'm leaving Miami having learned so much, not only about lobstering, the culture of free diving, but myself as well. That took a lot of work. I can't wait to apply it all. Next time, I'll be sure to hold on to the lobster. I trapped it. I trapped it. <laughs>